Hello Blender renderers, today I'm going to show you how to make this um, really funky abstract VJ loop that uh, I made the other day. It's basically going to take you through these sort of sci-fi theme tunnels. Um, it's going to look really cool and it shouldn't take too long for you guys to replicate. Onward with the tutorial. Alright then, once you've got Blender open, just delete the default cube, so hit X, delete, hit Shift A, add a mesh and we're going to add an echo sphere. Now hit the tilde key, then hit 3, so we zoom on in and come into edit modes, so that's tab, come over here to edge and we're going to do edge split. Now come out of edit mode, so hit tab again, come to your modifier section, add a modifier and we're going to add a smooth modifier. Leave the parameters where they are, we're going to animate the factor later to create a weird sort of opening and shutting effect. So add a new modifier and now we're going to add a solidify modifier. Pop the thickness up a little bit, not too much, probably about 0.03. And add another modifier and we're going to add a wireframe modifier now. Come down to your wireframe modifier settings and we're going to just uncheck this box, replace original. We basically want to add the wireframe on top of the mesh. Uh, leave it as it is for now, we'll probably edit it later when we start shading it. Add another modifier and we're going to add a mirror modifier now. So come down to your mirror modifier parameters and we're going to check X, Y and Z and we're going to select bisect on all of them and now we have a perfectly symmetrical object. Great, that's our sphere done. Now we're going to start instancing this object so select the echo sphere and press M and add to a new collection and we'll call that and just call it wherever you want. So now we're going to add the instance that we just made so hit shift A, add a collection instance and add Echo. I hit G, Y, eight, and hit enter. Now we have a copy of this sphere, and now anything that we edit on that sphere will also affect the other one. As you can see, we're going to add the tunnel now, which the camera is going to go through to create that really cool loop effect. So hit Shift A, add a mesh, and we're going to add a cylinder. Now come to your settings here. And make sure you don't click anywhere because this box will disappear after. Um, if it if it does disappear, just delete it and add an, another one. So um, just retry it. So add cylinder, change the vertices to 10. Now click on your cylinder, RX90, SY8. Now hit Control A and apply the rotation. Control A again and apply the scale. Now you can see we're clipping a bit. The echo sphere is kind of poking out of the tunnel. So, so we're just going to scale it by the X axis till you stop seeing the clipping. Say so about there. Uh, control C and paste that value into the Z axis. And there you go. Make sure you don't edit the Y axis or if you haven't applied scale, just make sure you don't edit the axis that is affecting the length of the tube because you want it to you want the link to be mathematically correct so you can seamlessly loop the um the animation so make sure that you're affecting the right axes okay now jump into edit mode on this cylinder so tab again select faces here just click anywhere out of the out of the object so select this face x delete faces and same again on the other side x delete faces now we're just gonna loop cut this um, object. So hit the tilde key, hit eight, so you get a top view, and come over here to loop cut. And we're gonna apply one in the middle, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. So it's evenly divided. Come out of loop cut, click on this thing here, come out of edit mode, and we're done with that for now. We're just gonna set our camera now. So actually delete this light first. X, delete that light, click on your camera, hit Alt G and Alt R to reset the location and the rotation. Now hit RX 90 and hit G Y minus eight. And now if you hit zero, you can go in and out of uh, camera view. And there you go. If you look at top view now, your camera starts precisely at the point of where the tunnel starts, which is 
essential if you want it to loop properly. And we're just going to do a quick animation on that camera. Okay, so bring your timeline up, change this to 120 because we're going to make a five second loop. On your location, on the y-axis, make sure you're on the first frame. Apply a keyframe on frame one, come to frame one to one, change the y-axis to eight and apply a keyframe now. And if you see, you're going to get the camera moves along the tunnel right to the end and then back again. And if you hit zero, you can see that animation. Great. So now that the camera's set up, we are going to make the tunnel a bit more interesting. So click on the tunnel, click on your cylinder. So click on your cylinder, go to your modifier section, add a modifier, and we're going to add a wireframe modifier. And you get this cool kind of spider web. Bring the uh, thickness down to about 0 0.01. Now, Duplicate this cylinder, so hit Shift D, Enter, and we're going to delete the wireframe on this one we've just duplicated. We're going to name this one Tunnel Wires, and we're going to name this one, and we're going to name this one Tunnel Reflect. So what we're going to do when we start shading, we're going to add emission shaders to the wires, and we're going to have the duplicated cylinder basically reflect the light, and it's going to create this really cool spacey effect. But for the reflections to work properly, we need there to be a bit more space um, in between the light source. So click on the one that isn't the wireframe, and we're just going to go to the transform settings, and we're just going to bring the scale out even further on the x-axis to wherever you want. We'll say about there. Control C and copy that on the Z. And if you come out of camera mode, you can see you have a bit of a gap between the wire and the wall. All right, great. Um, I think we can start shading the. Uh, the thing now so if you um, just save your file first I'm just going to call it hyperspace tunnel tip and in order to start shading we need to come into rendered mode so hit Z on your keyboard hit 8 you're going to see everything looks grey and dull that's because I've deleted the light earlier so we're going to have some fun and start adding a bit of lighting to the scene so click on tunnel wire and if you come into edit mode your wireframe is going to disappear now, you see. Uh, so the reason why that is, is because we haven't applied it. So once you apply the modifier, it um, turns it into mesh that you can then further edit. But um, once you've applied it, there's no going back. You can't change any of these parameters. Apply your wireframe now and come into edit mode. And now you can see the wireframe and you can see we can start actually, um, we can start doing some interesting things with the faces. So. I'm going to select one of these faces. If you can't select your faces, just make sure you have this thing uh, selected. Uh, so yeah, select one of them, come to select, select random, and bring the percentage of selections down to about here. You can play with this seed generator. It's just a random generator of different varieties of selections. Um, just put it to wherever you like it. Now come to your material settings, and we're going to add a new material. Now this is going to be our base material. This is going to affect the whole wireframe, so we'll make this a kind of metallic grey. And just, just leave the roughness where it is. If you add a new material now, add a new one here. So material 2, we're going to change the surface to an emission shader. And if you select colour, we're going to go with a nice sort of deep blue. And we're going to pop the strength up to about 8. If you hit a sign, it's going to assign this material to all of the ones that you've just selected. So click assign. And now if you hit tab and come out of edit mode. Now if you just turn your overlays off over here, you'll see that the material has been applied to those selected wireframes. Now we're going to add another color to some of the other wireframes. And I think we're going to go with a nice orange this time. So add plus and a new material. We're going to go with, like I said, we're going to go with a nice sort of orange pump strength up to 8 and again same step select select random and just change this play around with the seeds till it covers most of the um, the wireframes and you can pop the percentage up if you want or bring it down and now hit assign and just take your overlays off and there you'll see you've got a bit more color now so we're going to make the world black so come to your world settings come to color come bring that all the way down 
Just put your overlays back on. Come out of edit mode actually. So hit tab so you're out of edit mode. Um, we're going to shade this now, this echo sphere. So come to your material settings, add a new one. We're going to have the base material of this sphere, a principled shader. So leave it as it is. Leave the base color as it is. Put the metallic all the way up and drop the roughness all the way down. So it's going to be a, a shiny material now. And it's going to reflect a lot of these um, wireframes and it's going to look awesome. Now, add a new material. So select a mission. And we're just going to copy the same color. So click on your color, come to hex, get that code, control C, go back to your echo sphere, come to your hex, control V, and pop that up to A. Take your overlays off, and that's not going to affect it, you see. So what we need to do is come to the modifier settings of the echo sphere. So come here. And on your wireframe settings, over here in material, we want to hit material 1. Great. That's looking really cool now. So we are going to add a bit more depth to this now. So come over to your scene settings and tick ambient inclusion. Make sure you're in Eevee, by the way. This is done in Eevee. So uh, come, uh, tick ambient inclusion, bloom, screen space reflections, and motion blur. And you're gonna, you, you can see now it's really starting to come to life. Uh, but we still need to do a bit more shading on the actual tunnel. So if you come to the tunnel reflect one, come to our material settings here, add a new one. We're going to leave it as principled. We're going to leave the surface as it is. Drop the base color down to about here. Pump the metallic all the way up. And we're going to bring the roughness all the way down and we're going to get these crazy reflections now but it's very overpowering at the moment so if you come back to your uh, your render settings and just drop the bloom down to about here come down here come to color management we're going to go with very high contrast and we're going to drop the gamma down to 0.8 i think we can make the wireframe a little bit thinner so if you click on your echo sphere Come to your modifier settings and on your wireframe, just drop the thickness down. We'll say about 0.013, I think looks good. Right, that's pretty much the shading done for now. But if you come to the end of your animation, you can see it's not going to loop. And that's because we need to uh, we need to make the tunnel longer, basically. So if you come out of it rendered mode, so hit Z and 6, we are going to start instancing this little scene that we've created. So pop your overlays back on. Select these two, press M, add a new collection, and we'll call this tunnel. We're going to put this echo sphere inside this collection, and we're also going to put this one inside the collection. Inside your tunnel collection, now you have all of these, and we're going to start instancing all of this. So just zoom on out a bit. Now hit Shift A, add a new collection instance, hit GY16, hit Shift D. Y16, Shift D, Y16, and just repeat that process until you have about seven instances. Come into your camera mode and play the animation. Now you're gonna get this really cool effect. And if you wanna make the echo sphere smaller, uh, I'm gonna bring it down a tiny bit. So hit S, Shift, and I'm just gonna bring it down about here. Now we're gonna start actually animating these echo spheres. So come to the first frame of the scene and select this echo sphere, this first one. Now we're going to animate this factor so it kind of opens as you travel through the tunnel. So, okay, before I start animating, I just need to add one more tunnel. So if you just select this instance, not, not the main one, we'll select one of the instances, hit Shift D, and we're just going to bring this, so hit G, Y and we're gonna hold control and we're gonna bring that just to the end. So if you hold control it snaps it to the grid and we just want that to be at the start. So right, let's just make sure that the animation loops seamlessly. So hit play and we're gonna watch it go. Cool, that's looking really good. Right. Let's actually start animating this echo sphere now. So um, put your overlays on. We're going to start the, the animation with the factor at 1.360. So just make sure that's set to that. 
hover your mouse over the factor, hit I to add a keyframe. Now select that keyframe, hit Shift D so we duplicate it, and bring that last one to one to one. Come from the start, and we're gonna get to about here. So bring the factor down to about, we'll say there. So hit I again to apply a new keyframe. Now on frame 60, we're gonna bring the factor all the way here, add another keyframe, and on this one, we're gonna bring the back about here, and that should look cool now. So hit A, press T, make sure your interpolation is set to Bezier. And one thing I forgot to say as well, on the camera, make sure that you do the same, hit A, T, but make sure that's set to linear. You need that to be set to linear in order for this to work. Okay, so back to the ecosphere. Let's watch that animation from the start. Cool. That's looking really good. Now let's look at it in rendered mode. Now your computer may struggle because there's a lot going on here. You've got a lot of reflections and things to deal with. I do think that the wireframe is a little bit too thick on the, the Echosphere. So make sure your Echosphere is selected, come to the modifier settings, and on wireframe, we're gonna bring that down about 0 0.002. And I'm just gonna pump up the strength a bit on the yellow wireframe of the tunnel as well. So tunnel wire, come to your material settings and let's pump that up to 10. I wanna make this come out a bit more. So I'm going to pop the fact up a tiny bit higher, just a touch, not too high. We'll do 1.947, so just on frame 91, replace that, just hit I and it should replace the keyframe. I forgot to mention, you can also play around with the camera settings, so if you come to camera, just click on your camera, come to this camera bit here. So if you do want to, if you want to make it appear like it's moving faster, you can actually um, bring the focal length down, so I'm going to set it to about 28 and you get a, a wider angle lens and it kind of gives the illusion that you're moving a bit faster. Um, once you render it, you'll be able to see what I mean more, but um, obviously it's it's taken a while to process all the graphics. But yeah, if you just play around with that too, you find it somewhere that you like. Um, I have it set to 28, but you can do whatever you want. Right, only thing left to do now is to render the animation. So come to your um, output settings and just save it somewhere you can find it. I have a little folder called Blender Renders. So I'm just gonna save it here. And we'll call it Hyperspace Tunnel. Um, make sure your file format is set to FFmpeg video. Encoding, you want that to be MPEG4, video codec leave at H.264, output quality perceptually lossless. And now come to Render and hit render animation and then you just gotta wait for it to finish. Right, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot. Uh, it's a really cool render and it looks really awesome on big screens. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you felt like you gained value from the content and also check out some of my work. You can download the render at nevmotion.co.uk.